Make way for America's sweetheart. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 best Mandy Moore moments. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the best Mandy Moore moments from over the years, looking at interviews, talk show appearances, and moments from the singer and actress's life, as well as career highlights from music, television, film, and beyond. I'm the one lucky cast member that gets to sort of like traverse all of this territory of like playing this woman from 22 to like 68. You look and good at 68. <laughs> she does, right? Number 10, her awesome themed birthday party. It seems that whatever Mandy Moore applies herself to, she really gives her all. And party planning is clearly no exception. For her 34th birthday in 2018, she skipped right over the cliches and went for something super specific, topical, and more than a little odd. Taking inspiration from the Netflix documentary series Wild Wild Country, which explores the controversial Rajneesh movement, Moore had guests adopt the various shades of red and orange worn by the Rajneeshis. That's a theme that guests are sure to never forget. And talk about pure Instagram gold. Number 9. Voicing Rapunzel – Tangled Franchise Yes, the success of Tangled and its ensuing franchise, including the short film Tangled Ever After and the TV series, was the result of a lot of hard work by many dedicated voice actors, animators, and other creative collaborators. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss. But in hindsight, it's really hard to imagine this Disney film soaring to such great heights or achieving the sort of enduring popularity it has with anyone else but Mandy Moore voicing our heroine. Well, the unconscious heathen in my armoire might disagree with you if I hadn't rendered him speechless with the very frying pan I used to make us breakfast this morning. It's clear that Moore, with her instantly likable and incredibly expressive voice, was the only woman for the job. We're just thrilled that she signed on for the TV series too. The world has somehow shifted. Number 8. The Launch of Her Clothing Line as far as early 2000s pop stars go, Mandy Moore was a notable outlier. She was cut from a very different cloth than her peers. And when she later launched her clothing line, it was too. There's nothing more to say. There's nothing else I more than to feel this way. Her contemporary line of youth-oriented clothing wasn't a cash grab based around her likeness but rather an attempt to give young women easy, comfortable, and low-maintenance clothing that they could look and feel good in. As a taller woman, Moore also wanted to make sure that the clothing fit well across a variety of body types. Launched in 2005 and selling until 2009, Emblem made the second half of the aughts an easier time to pick an outfit. Number 7. Her This Is Us Autocomplete Interview – Wired we love Mandy Moore, but we like her even more when she's in the excellent company of her This Is Us co-stars. In this fun Wired segment, Milo Ventimiglia, Justin Hartley, and more tackle some of Google's most asked questions both about themselves and their hit series. Does Mandy Moore sing quite well? The voice of an angel, oh, like right. with the gates of heaven open. I, I do sing. That feels like an odd question. Sing thing, but... well would be, yeah. Or does Mandy well. Moore sing often? Yeah. On This Is Us. Yes, yes to all. Yes yeah. to all. D yes. all of the above. Yes, D all of the above. The chemistry between these three is absolutely fantastic, making you realize that though This Is Us handles some heavy subject matter, they clearly have a great time working together. Where does Mandy Moore live? live. I live in Los Angeles. Give an address and a phone number, please. <laughs> also, a blood type and a credit card number would yes. be great. And my social security you number. You wake up in a bathtub just covered in ice with your <laughs> liver gone or whatever. <laughs> But it'd be okay because it's your bathtub. <laughs> the whole thing is super charming start to finish. But the highlight of the interview was probably learning fun facts about Moore. Like the fact that she has a sperm tattooed on her right foot. Does Mandy Moore have tattoos? I do. You do? She I does. Have two tiny. I have a sperm on my foot, which is a long story. Number six, her cameo as Amy, How I Met Your Mother. This hit series had a number of memorable celebrity cameos over the course of its nine season run, but Moore's nonetheless remains a notable standout. Amy. Ted. <laughs> Going hilariously against type, 
Moore played Amy, a girl Ted spends one wild night with while trying to move on from Robin and, quote, win the breakup. <gasps> we should start a fire. After this, maybe. Oh, man, this is going to be legend. Wait for it. And that's all I remember. The next morning, I woke up alone, back home. From hot tubbing at a house that apparently isn't Amy's to getting blackout drunk, this Amy-led night really takes Ted outside of his comfort zone. Of course, though her character made a big impression with viewers, she left a lasting one on Ted Mosby, in the form of a regrettable lower back tattoo of a butterfly. Oh my god! <laughs> I have a tattoo! Oh, that's not a tattoo. That, dear boy, is a tramp stamp. Number five. Her house tour, Architectural Digest. Hi guys, I'm Mandy Moore, and welcome to my home. Come on in. It's always a treat to get a behind the scenes look into the life of our favorite celebrities. And thanks to Architectural Digest, we got to go on a tour of Mandy Moore's incredible Pasadena home, which she shares with partner Taylor Goldsmith. We wanted this room to sort of feel not too formal, still cozy. We were really big on making sure that like we had space for a piano. The building itself, which was built in 1950, is incredible to say the least. But the real treat is to see how Moore likes to decorate. Suffice it to say, she can come and redecorate our place whenever she wants, although we'd settle for a dinner invite. Also, who knew that she was a Scotch girl? We walked through the house and immediately thought, like, this would be a great sort of, like, reading nook. Number four, Why Is Mandy Crying? The Ellen DeGeneres Show. So we're gonna play a game, it's called Why Is Mandy Crying? Because um, <laughs> you're really good at being sad and crying and stuff, so... <laughs> if there's one television personality who's mastered the art of crafting fun interview games, it's Ellen Ellen DeGeneres. In this segment, Ellen riffs on Mandy Moore's natural ability to convincingly cry on camera, while good-naturedly poking fun at just how often it seems to happen. You want me? It is me now. Huh? He... He want me. Hey. <laughs> the funny twist, of course, is that Moore has to do it while wearing a mouthpiece that garbles her ability to speak clearly, and that she's been given some of the most ridiculous reasons to be sad. Despite the challenges, Moore delivers one unforgettable and hilarious performance after another. The donkey bucked your mom! Oh! <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh. That's horrible! Oh. All right. Oh. Woo! Ah. That is yep. a lot. Number three, playing Jamie Sullivan, A Walk to Remember. Second to The Notebook, A Walk to Remember, released in 2002, is perhaps the most influential and enduring Nicholas Sparks adaptation. Honestly though, without Moore's performance as Jamie, we're not sure that would be the case. What's number one? I tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. The film was actually met with generally poor reviews from critics, but Moore's performance was singled out as the film's most redeeming quality. Clearly that was enough for the general public, as the film has gone on to enduring popularity as a classic, if sappy, romantic drama. No, no, the real reason why you're scared is because you want to be with me too. It also cemented Moore as an icon amongst teens earning her the title of Breakout Actress at the Teen Choice Awards and Best Breakthrough Female Performance at the MTV Movie Awards. Number two, when she got punked, punked. Speaking of MTV, this series starring Ashton Kutcher has to be one of the greatest gifts that the channel ever gave us. Hey, Mandy. How are you? I'm Todd, so nice to it's meet so nice you. To meet what you a pleasure. Too. Such a big fan of you. Oh, thank you. Yay. Thanks for inviting me out today. The Celebrity Prank series gave us countless memorable celebrity moments. But even against steep competition, Moore's moment in the spotlight remains a standout. You know, when you, have you ever bought a car online or on the internet? You purchase this on the you internet can buy at your anything. home? Yeah, yeah. You can buy trucks, cars, uh, houses, boats. Appearing in the second episode of the first season, Moore is brought on board what she believes is a home makeover show, only to be left reeling and speechless as it all goes wrong. You can't help but feel bad for Moore when she thinks she's destroyed a man's home and imminent proposal to his girlfriend. But knowing that it's all in good fun, it's frickin' hilarious. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I bet it goes with anything. Of course it does! Mia, <laughs> 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 you're such a freak! Yeah.
Yeah. I, I gotta go. I gotta go home. I, I, we shouldn't be here. My husband, I have to find my husband. And that man, he could come back Mary, over here. Mary, you're not going anywhere. Okay? That man is not coming back. I need you to pull yourself together and bring me those supplies. Number one, the Super Bowl Sunday episode, This Is Us. Mandy Moore's performance as Rebecca Pearson on this hit NBC series has earned her a Golden Globe nomination and heaps of critical praise. Every year on my saddest day, your father finds a way to send me some sign that literally makes me belly laugh. When the aptly titled Super Bowl Sunday aired after Super Bowl 52, however, Moore's performance absolutely broke our hearts. Jack. Viewers were understandably going to be devastated by the death of Milo Ventimiglia's Jack Pearson, however it played out. But having to watch Rebecca receive the news the way she did was so much more powerful than we ever could have imagined. Moore's nuanced performance was flawless in that moment, and she's got buckets full of our tears to prove it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.